Okay, so we're still talking about support vector machines, although I haven't told you what support vector machines are yet. We're getting there, Michael. Um, bear with me. And what we got from our last discussion is that what we want to do somehow is maximize uh, a particular equation. That is 2 over the length of w. And as a reminder, w are the parameters of our hyperplane. So somehow we want to maximize that equation subject to the constraints that we still classify everything correctly. Okay, so we want to maximize 2 over the length of w while classifying everything correctly. But while classifying everything correctly is not um, a very mathematically uh, satisfying uh, expression, um, but it turns out we can uh, turn that into a mathematically uh, satisfying expression. And let me show you how to do that. Uh, so here's a simple equation. While classifying everything correctly it turns out to be the same as, and I'm just going to write, I'm going to write it out for you, Michael, and see if you can, you can guess why this works. So what I've written here is yi times w transpose xi plus b greater than or equal to 1 for all i. That is, for all of our training data examples. So why does this work? Well, what we really want is that the class, the, that linear classifier w t x i plus b is greater than or equal to 1 for the positive examples and less than or equal to negative 1 for the negative examples. But you cleverly multiply by the label on the left-hand side, which does exactly that. If yi is 1, it leaves it untouched. And if yi is negative 1, it flips everything around so that we're really talking about less than or equal to minus 1. That's, that's very clever. It is very clever, and I'm going to pretend that I came up with that idea myself. <laughs> so it turns out that trying to solve this particular problem, maximizing 2 over w while satisfying that constraint, is a little painful to do but that we can solve an equivalent problem, which turns out to be much easier to do, and that is this problem. That is, rather than trying to maximize 2 over the length of w, we can instead try to minimize 1 half times w squared. Now, can you see that those will always have the same answer? Yeah, so what, not the same answer, but it will be minim the, the point that maximizes one will minimize the other. Yeah, because the, we, we took the reciprocal, as long as we're talking about positive things, and since these are lengths, they'll be positive. Taking the reciprocal exactly you know, changes the direction uh, of what the answer is, and the squaring is, is, makes it monotone. It, doesn't, it, doesn't, uh, it magnifies it, but it doesn't change the ordering of things. So yeah, that, that, that seems fine. I don't know why that's any easier, but it seems the same. Well, do you want to know why it's easier? Because I'll tell you. Please. Uh, this is easier because when you have an optimization problem of this form, something like a minimizing a w squared subject to a bunch of constraints, that's called a quadratic programming problem. And people know how to solve quadratic programming problems in relatively straightforward ways. Awesome. Now, what else is nice about that is a couple of things. One is it turns out that these always have a solution and, in fact, have a unique solution. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to solve quadratic programming problems because I don't know how to do it other than to call it up in the MATLAB. But there's a whole set of classes out there um, where they teach you how to do quadratic programming. We could take it aside. I could learn all about quadratic programming, and then we could talk about it for two hours. But it's really beside the point. The important thing is that we have defined a specific optimization problem and that there are known techniques that come from linear algebra that tell us how to solve them, and we can just plug and play and go. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Okay, fair enough. So in particular, it turns out that we can transform, again, this particular quadratic programming problem into a different quadratic programming problem, or actually, truthfully, into the normal form for a quadratic programming problem that has the following form. So here's what this equation tells you, Michael. We have basically started out by trying to maximize the margin. Um, and that's the same thing as trying to maximize 2 over the length of w, I think I convinced you of, subject to a particular set of constraints, which are how we codify that we want to classify every data point correctly in the training set. We've argued that that's equivalent to minimizing 1 half times the length of w squared, subject to the same constraints. And then notice, because we happen to know this, that you can convert that into a quadratic programming problem, which we know how to solve. And it turns out that quadratic programming problem has a very particular form. Rather than trying to minimize 1 half of w squared, we can try to maximize another function that has a different set of parameters, which I'll call alpha. And that equation uh, has the following form. It's the sum over all of the data points, i, indexed by i, of this new set of parameters, alpha, minus 
one half times for every pair of examples the product of their alphas, their labels, and their values, subject to a different set of constraints, namely that all of the alphas are non-negative, and that the sum of the product of the alphas and the labels that go along with them are equal to zero. Holy cow. Now, it's so obvious how you get from one step to the other, I'm not going to bother to explain it to you, um, but instead tell you to go read a quadratic programming book. What I really need you to believe, though, mainly because I'm asserting it, is that these are equivalent. So if you buy up to the point that uh, we're trying to maximize the margin, and that's the same thing as maximizing 2 of the length of w, and you buy that, that's the same as trying to minimize 1 half times uh, w squared, then you just have to take a leap of faith here that if we instead maximize this other equation, it turns out that we're solving the same problem and that we know how to do it using quadratic programming. Or other people know how to do it, and they've written code for us. Okay? All right. All right. So trust me on this. This is what it is that we want to solve. Now, it turns out that we can run little programs to solve this, um, and you end up with answers. But what's really interesting is what this equation actually tells us about what we're trying to do. So let me just show you. Let me just talk a little bit about the properties of this equation and a property of the solutions to this equation for a second. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me move a few things around so that uh, we can look at it. 